Okay, so um, I'm just going to do a few here so that you um, can see just how how easy it is to um, prepare your tea bags. Um, I've had these um, sitting drying for a couple of days now. Some of them are just the tea bags that come without a string, and some of them are the ones that come in a string. It's interesting how different kinds of tea bags give you different kinds of patterns. And once we cut them out, you can, um, once we pull out the tea bag leaves, you can see um, how different it is. And, you know, depending on you know, how um, much you've soaked them, depends on, this one looks like it's a, um, one of my green tea ones, light. This one looks like it's, you know, black tea. So, really interesting. Different hues of tea will give you different hues. Um, on the bags, which just you know give you that starting um, artwork already there. So I'll show you what I do. So grab one of these first. What I do is just make sure that it's um, tapped out like that, and then I like poke a little hole up here with my really fine scissors and make it so that it's up on one side only. The other side has not been cut, and then I grab. Um, you can see I've been making a few here, and then you just tap it out, tap it out. The smaller the hole, I think the better, but you can just slip the whole thing open if you want, whatever you do. Now wet ones will be clumped in there, so the more you kind of rub, you will unclump the tea leaves that are in there, and um, ta -da, there you go. Now I, I'm not very pedantic as to get all the leaves out um, I will sh um, I discovered that if you leave a, a few in there accidentally they actually add to your artwork later on as you um, work on your tea bag so don't worry about the loose little ones that are in there they actually look really good in there um, when you start painting or stamping so that's that kind done you can see the, the the cuts right there but what I usually do is I just flip it over and work on that side now for these guys, um, I'm not really worried about the cut as much. Um, I just like pat out the bottom part there. So pat that out and then just insert my camera here. Just insert a little the blade, um, the scissors, like that, and then just slowly work out those tea leaves. And spit patience is required. Work on it, work on it. It's very fine. Okay. Just keeps coming. <laughs> okay. So and I would I would work on that side. Okay. Um, okay, and you know, we'll just do one more here. And that will come out really easy. So the key is to have a dry tea bag. Um, and I left them to dry naturally just because I've had a few other things that I needed to do. So this was just um, collecting tea bags and letting them dry on their own while I did other projects. Um, everything else here, you know, same thing. So what I'll do is I'll go and do that and you don't have to watch me doing a boring, pro a boring process and I'll be back. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and just do um, a couple here for you so you can see what my process is and then, you know, um, you can do it yourself. So I'm going to use this one. She's from the mini um, she's one of the little minis 
I'm just going to place her on, um, on an acrylic block. I'm going to use archival ink because right now I'm not sure what I'll be using to color her in. So um, as long as it's um, permanent, then it's not going to come off. So um, I've got two here that are from used, um, used tea bags. One, I really should get something to stamp on. Okay. I'll just um, I'll just repeat this same image over onto all three. So there. Um, now I just sometimes I just check to see where there's a stain, and you know where there's where there's a stain, it won't come out. It'll come out quite dark. So I'm going to flip it over and use the other side. And for the last one, I'm going to use um, an unused tea bag. Just like that. Okay, that looks really good. All right. So I'm gonna move this out the way so you can see what I'm doing. Um, okay, so we've got these three stamped. Now, um, just grab a whole set of my. Um, my distress inks in this little container and um, we can start off with one of these guys maybe this one so it looks quite dark already so I might use um, uh, I might use a light color let's use maybe this one let's see how this looks so Kind of complements the tea stain. That looks really good. Okay, and then on my um, on the Outers. I might just do a little bit of green. Maybe use, maybe use this green on the outside. I should be using this is where this is why my desk gets all dirty because I just I just ink and stamp and whatever all over my desk. like that nice and light um, next um, I, what I'll use is I have a couple of background stands here um, and like a script and a, um, a music one so I might use the music one here grab my black archival and just the corner here. I'll just do a little bit there and a little bit there. So it adds a little bit of something into the background. And then if you wanted to go ahead and use a, a word, you can use any of these ones along the side. Or I actually have um, this really nice um, mini stamp. Um, um, collection um, little letter stamps from recollections um, and uh, you can stamp whatever word you want on there too cute now if you look at that and you think oh it's really 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 light um, it's really dark sorry we can lighten it up a little bit um, my pencils and we can choose to lighten up um, her on the inside. What should we use? Maybe like a blue, blue for her dress, maybe. Can you see what I'm doing? Probably can't. 
can't see what I'm doing. All right, there we go, blue. And we're gonna get her into some kind of, actually, I think we should give her black hair. Charcoal gray. Um, let's go quite dark on the hair because it's already quite orange. So if you give her blonde locks, they'll kind of, we'll go the background. This is in no way precise coloring or shading. <laughs> this is just blocking it in. Um, and a little bunny here. What should we do? Should we do a little pink bunny maybe? Too cute. Um, now, just give her some pink cheeks here. A little bit of color. And oh, those cheeks look awful. Way to go and ruin a cute thing. But anyway, <laughs> so that's how you can just quickly make some art there. Now, I'll do one more with you and I'll show you the difference between making it. Um, making tea bag art with used tea bags versus making tea bag art with um, with uh, with unused tea bags. Um, so once again, like let's let's go ahead and use these. Um, so you can use your really light colors on these ones. Let's see what we're doing here. Um, so I want to use the yellow with the watercolor. Um, and then grab some green in the background there. This is she's standing in a meadow. Okay. And um, once again, you can just grab background. And if we maybe this time give her a pink dress. All right, so here we go, um, looking really cute. Everything's kind of lightly done. And then um, and then I'm gonna come along now and I'm gonna put my word in. Oh no, stuffed it up. That's funny. And that's classic me. Just stuffed it up at the very end. But you know what I'm trying to say. Shine. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do just one more with this one. Okay, as you can see here, I'm going to be using my um, watercolor crayons. They are the equivalent of like a gelato. And I'm just going to be putting them here, um, lightly putting on the pink on the dress. And then I also used a combination of my uh, ink tense pencils to do her hair there. And then I'm gonna go, go back with the green metallic a water crayon um, for the background. Okay, so I'm back and this is now dry. And we're gonna go ahead and stamp a background and a sentiment. So I'm just gonna use this one, just like that. All right, so here's the three that we've done just now. 
cute, the hun bun, and while I was waiting for that to dry, I redid this one. You know, you, you've got two sides, just start again on the other side, not a problem. So that's our three. Um, and, um, yeah. Go ahead and save all your tea bags and make cute little tea bag art. <laughs>